Alrighty, welcome back everyone to my PCB design for manufacturing rules tutorial. Alright, so this will probably be the last part, hopefully. Um, and we'll just go right into it. So the one we're on right now is going to be hole to hole clearance. So what this refers to as so looking at these vias, if we actually just get rid of the outer mask layer. So what we're left with is the hole right here. So what it's talking about is how close these actual holes can be together. Um, and I think this is probably violating a design rule. Run a design rule check. So the one on blah, blah, blah. hold a hole clearance. There we go. And so basically, like it's literally how close the actual drilled holes can be. And let's see if we can view. So yeah, so it's literally how close these uh, drilled holes can be to each other. Um. So the way I end up setting this rule is I kind of use like a little pro league tactic. Was I took a look at some other components, namely like the. Uh, I can pull it up here. There's one I looked, it was the transformer footprint. A master PCB lib. So let's see, I don't know if I can actually, yeah. So looking at this transformer footprint, um, I just looked at how close these holes were together. I'm sure you could probably go a little bit smaller, but for the purposes of like starting out, um, like I said, I use this as a reference, right? And I measured them and I think I ended up getting something like 20 mils or 30 mils or something like that. And we'll just check out what I said as a remind me. My whole whole clearance I've said is 30 mils, right? Um, so yeah, basically that's kind of how I, I set mine was I just looked at what through hole components are, are set as like what their clearances are. And I just based my design rule off of that. Um, that was a fairly simple one to, to set. Um, I don't think Sierra Circuits has this one listed on their website, so that's why I wasn't sure. One thing you might do is like message them and see what they would recommend. And again, this is whatever fab house you're using, right? Um, just try, you can email them, or if they have like a little online portal you can message them through, then I would say you definitely use that. Alrighty, so the last and final one is going to be copper to board edge clearance. So what, what this means is if we go into say routing mode and we just route a little race right here. Actually I have it, well I don't know, I don't think I have it. It will allow me to go all the way to the edge right here. So what this basically means is how close any copper primitive, right? This could be a via, this could be a copper pour, this could be a trace, this could be a pad any any copper how close to the edge of the board you can get because you actually can't put stuff like right up on the edge apparently um so basically what it is is talking about like this actual distance right here and I, again this could be literally any copper primitive so i think i ended up googling around for this rule as well um because it wasn't explicitly stated on a sierra circuits website so what I ended up setting mine as was clearance and what's the no it wasn't it was board outline clearance that's what this is so this is like I said it's the clearance from that to that um, and again this has one of those tables right because we have all of our copper primitives and then we have all the different edges right because uh, there's like a cutout edge you can actually etch little um, like holes or like obviously you can put a hole in the middle of your board it would kind of reason that you don't want copper getting too close to that so you just had some hole drilled like say you had like a mounting hole drilled or something that's where these kind of come from um, and the same thing goes for like the split barrier we'll talk about we'll go through and explain what all these uh, various primitives are in another video but basically all I did was I just set mine to 30 because I googled around on the forums and they said yeah that's a good uh, number to go with so I mean it's pretty simple not the like again we're not really worried about this is not going to be like a tight number to deal with I think the more important ones are the ones we covered earlier in the video because they have a lot more impact on you know your stuff inside the board 
because all this like one way one get one workaround is just make your board a little bit bigger, right? That's and we don't have any constraints on our board sizes, at least not yet, right? So maybe when we get into constraining our board sizes and further you know future projects, we will worry about tweaking this rule again. But again, like I said, for uh, like beginner purposes, like this is a great setup to have. This is a great first set of rules to have. Um, oh yeah, and there's one last one I want to go check out that I think I forgot to mention, and that's gonna be that the paste mask expansion. So there's, remember we had solder mask expansion, and this is where you set the solder mask expansion, by the way, and um, to, to control that. So I remember when we were making the PCB footprint, um, this is where you set that rule actually. And then there's also paste mask expansion. And remember you, hopefully you, uh, like in my other videos in that, in, uh, the Altium beginner tutorial video series I made, I covered it. And then the PCV design components tutorials, I covered it as well. But you just go here and you click on paste mask. What this is, is, um, Remember, this is like the little stencil that they etch out of stainless steel to actually put the initial solder paste on before they reheat it to melt it back to your components. Um, and so there's like, you can set an expansion for this. Now, like if you look at the rule, I actually have mine set to zero mils. Um, and that's because you definitely don't want more, you don't want an overflow of copper on your actual pad, right? Because that could just spell disaster if it, leaks or if it runs off somewhere and, and short something like that could be that could just spell disaster um, and secondly these are being made out of stainless steel so you can actually get these they're very robust it's a very robust material um, so and it's just one little thin piece of thing that's actually not like they use it as a stencil so um, like they can take their time and get it correct and they're not they only have to make one Right, and they just can reuse it over and over and over again. So picking, you know, having you have extremely tight constraints on this won't actually affect manufacturing costs. Um, it's all performance based, stuff like that. That's why I set it as zero um, for, for kind of those reasons I listed above. And so basically what it does is it makes it the same exact size of the pad. What you could even do is set like a negative value, which is pretty interesting. And I'll make it, um, I don't know if this will affect, what's the negative one? We'll see if that actually affects Oh, it does affect it real time. Sweet. Okay. If you see now, this is a little bit smaller because I set a negative value. You can do the same thing with solder masks, actually, um, which is kind of fascinating. So basically, what it ends up making, what it, what it will do is it'll make the solder mask cover your pad by a little bit as well. Um, here, we can actually go in and show an example of that. So we'll change that back to zero. And then we will set our solder mass expansion to just all that negative one because I, I want to look in 3d if if it does anything so looking at this we'll turn this on that so that's also smaller now right it's fascinating and then if we go to view 3d i'm wondering if it will show so it does show a little bit of coverage right but i'm gonna go to these actual pads i so right here, you can actually see right where it's at. So here's like the covered. This is what it looks like when the, the copper trace is covered. And here it shows our pads a little bit covered. Say so don't do this. You want, you want an expansion. Uh, so we're going to change that back to four mils. Um, four mils. Okay. Bye. Okay. Oh, look at that. See, it actually moved. Around. That's pretty neat. I think that's really nifty. So yeah, you get a little bit of a space there. Um, so yeah, so that'll pretty much do it for this um, little design rule, design for manufacturing series. Um, again, we'll definitely do, in the future, we'll do more rules covering other things. Um, like I said, this is a great place to start. If you've never set design rules before, I would definitely say go through, take the time to read all of these. Just read through them once, right? You don't actually have to have them memorized or anything like that. Just be familiar because they might actually bring up terms that are like, oh, I didn't even realize like, you know, that was a thing. It kind of gives you a good understanding of kind of how PCBs are manufactured, some of the design philosophies and stuff like that. So I think it's a great thing just to be vaguely familiar with, at least, you know, read through it once. And I think that'll help out a lot. So um, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. So thank you so much if you made it to the end of the series. Uh, I keep saying, forgetting to say this, but like, please, you know, drop a like or maybe a comment for me. That really helps out the channel. It helps it grow. 
and for comments what you can do just anything you want me to cover related to all team tutorials anything you want me to do if you have like some type of project you want me to work on for example like that power supply project um, I love taking project project requests from you guys um, anything else like that any any tips or things that you want me to do that I or should do differently definitely let me know about that um, that helps out a ton as well um, and yeah that pretty much that'll do it for this video